All right, guys, it's Shalom with the Paradox Gaming Network, and we are back with Ashes 101 on Nodes. We're doing the introduction to Nodes Part 4. We're going to talk about the castles. There are a lot of bits and pieces about castles you need to understand and how they interact with nodes and what they do in the world. And I really had to lay out this video in order to do the Ashes 101 uh, PvP video on castle sieges, because if you don't understand nodes, then it's really difficult to understand stand the importance of castle sieges and why you would want to be a monarch as a reminder this is your 2019 update everything we have here is current as of april 2019 so what i want to remind people right out the gate castles are guild content the majority of the content with castles is guild related so if you're not a part of a guild that's going after castles you're going to miss a lot of this content the castle sieges are mainly for the guilds although yes outsiders can be invited and approved the benefits for owning a castle belong mostly to the guild. Now, I do want to mention that the talk of alliances benefiting from castles is, has been discussed. But since I don't have enough details to talk about that, I'm going to leave it as the overarching heading that the benefits belong to the guild. And then the exceptions to that, uh, I can say alliance members can gain access to this once we have that stuff at a later time. Now, I do want to remind people there is some residual benefit to the region, both directly where the monarch can intervene on your behalf if you're being sieged, and there are some things the monarch can do. We'll talk about those in just a second. Now, it's really, really important when we start talking about castles that we use the right key terms. One key term is castle region, and that is 20% of the world map, and this is fixed in static. It does not change. We have zones of influence. These are the areas around a node. And these are fluid and will change based on the development of the node. And these can overlap castle regions. We also have economic regions. These are the areas around a point of interest. This is static. We have very limited information. So we don't know exactly uh, how economic regions get laid out. We just know that they're around a point of interest, which could be a node. It can also be a dungeon. It could also be a site uh, on the map. And we know that they're static. So uh, we're waiting for more information about economic regions. So this is some previously known information uh, in a visual representation that I did. As you can see, castles lead a region. There are five regions. There are five castles. Means a castle controls about 20% of the world. It was previously discussed that a, a castle can set taxes inside its castle region and it can spend money on defensive nodes in its region. Now, if some of those terms don't seem familiar to you, make sure you check out parts one, two, and three of the node series. Part one is linked up there. If you don't understand the basics of nodes, uh, then you're not going to understand the, the stuff I'm talking about now. We work on crawl, walk, run with Ashes uh, 101, and I'm kind of in the uh, late walk, early run stages. Uh, I do want to talk about those other options for the monarchs. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Monarchs have a dial that can influence crop yields, resources, events, but we don't have any more information than this. So can a monarch change an area from being highly dense populated with trees to being highly dense populated with mines? I have no idea. Uh, all I know is that he can dial up or turn down the resources. Uh, that's all we know. We're waiting for more information. We also know that the monarchs can unlock additional types of buildings in nodes. Again, we know that they can do this, but we don't have any other information. Now, here is a world map that I used previously, but what I want to show you is what's being depicted right here is uh, two regions, one brown, one white. But inside of this region, you also have the zones of influence going on. Now, what I could have done is I could have put a zone of influence around that village in the lower right hand corner. And the zone of influence of a village can overlap a castle region. We know that nodes operate on their own system. I talked about it in my nodes part three. That town uh, moved over to the right a little bit and it was stifling the growth of that village. The nodes system surpasses the castle region. So it's not just, you won't have two towns next to each other on the border because the node system is still in place. We also don't know how economic regions are going to impact over the castle regional lines, uh, but we know that they can overlap. We have it as a quote. We know they can overlap. I want to switch gears a little bit here, and I want to show you just the castle region part. Now, the castles also have their own nodes. You'll see that A, B, and C node, uh, these operate outside the node system. 
These are always capped at level three. They can never go above level three. They are always military. They cannot block the growth of other nodes. They cannot have their growth blocked by nodes in the node system. These exist for exactly one castle cycle. They have to be built up in the next cycle. And I'm going to talk about that particular part in the PvP video on Castle Sieges because the cycle, the build-up cycle with the caravans and the events, that's going to generate a lot of PvP. So I just think the PvP video is the proper setting for that. Now, what we do know is that the castle nodes in the node si system, uh, there is no open citizenship at these nodes. So guild members are part of the garrison at the castle. And only garrison members can use the node castle services. Now, the guild members are part of the garrison is a statement. Only garrison members can use the node castle services is a statement. This is where I'm thinking alliance members may be able to use them a little bit. Or people who participated in the last castle siege may be able to use them a little bit. We're still waiting for more details on the system. They exist, these castle nodes exist outside of the node system, which means there are no freeholds at them when they become level three. There is no government. These nodes belong to the castle, so they belong to the king. Now, they don't have a zone of influence, but it begs the, it begs the statement of you have to do activities inside of some boundary. Um, what I'm thinking Stephen meant by no zones of influence is no the effect of each other. But I'm going to bet there is a boundary that you have to do your activities in to grow them. And there's no social organizations atta uh, attached to these. Now, where I talk about the PvP opportunities, these nodes need to be built up. They require weekly caravan or they require caravans. There will be a weekly event at the nodes to disrupt them. And then the monthly guild siege. Now, all of these things I wanted to, to tell you. But I'm going to talk all about all of those in the Ashes 101 PvP Introduction to Castle Sieges video. Because that is the appropriate time and place to start labeling out all the PvP components. That's it for this one. This was a pretty short one. I wanted to make sure people understood just a little bit more in depth about castles. I also put castles in their own video because as we get more information about castles, I can quickly redo this video and not have to pull all those parts out of other videos. If you got questions about castles, go ahead and ask me at, uh, on Discord, Jalan hashtag 0001. Get me at the Ashes of Creation official Discord. Get me on my Twitch. And then make sure, big thank you to my sponsors. In the description below, there is a link. If you click on that, you will be registered to win a gift card at the end of the quarter. You guys take care. And now I'm going to go do the Ashes 101 PvP video on Castle Sieges. Hey, where are you going? You're not done yet. See these videos? This video is up here to watch. You gotta go over here. Hit the chibi. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the webpage. And I'll see you guys on Twitch.